May is winding to a close, and for every gamer, the excitement builds as E3 draws near. Today, I'm going to dive in on a juggernaut of the gaming world, Square Enix, and talk about what they may be bringing to the table this year. Welcome to Left Paw Gaming, and this is Octopath Traveler 2 and more from Square Enix at E3. If you're excited for this year's E3 and this video, make sure to drop a like below. They are super helpful to the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are brand new so that you can see all my game walkthroughs and more of my E3 prediction videos just like this as we get closer and closer. With all that out of the way, let's jump in and I really hope that you enjoy. First on the list for us to talk about is Final Fantasy 16. Having been announced during a PlayStation showcase with an amazing reveal trailer and given a shiny new website to give details on the main characters and show off some awesome artwork in the meantime, the world of Final Fantasy 16 has been relatively quiet. While there is no release date, there is apparently a plan to release some information in 2021. And since E3 is smack dab in the middle of 2021, I consider this a great time to give the fans some exciting news. Maybe even a release year. If they were to say 2023, I wouldn't be that upset because I know Square puts some heavy work into their longest running franchise. And with so many more awesome games to talk about, this is a great spot to start on our list. Next up on our list is Kingdom Hearts 4. With Kingdom Hearts 3 ending the Dark Seeker saga, I don't expect Sora and the gang to be hanging it up anytime soon. With how deep the franchise lore is, albeit convoluted at times, very convoluted, I don't see three main number games being all that Sora and his team are going to be showcased. The endings of Kingdom Hearts 3 plunge Sora into a new, albeit familiar, I'm saying that a lot. Looking World and Riku dove in headfirst to save him this time. The secret ending of the DLC, Remind, shows off some new players in the Eternal Light and Dark chess match and some surprising reveals. With the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts coming in 2022, I look to see some new numbered game get a teaser, at least, at this year's E3. Even if it isn't the next main Kingdom Hearts project, I'm still very excited for Kingdom Hearts 4. The next game that I want to talk about is a big one. To me, and I'm sure to many of you, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. The first part of Final Fantasy VII's remake was a masterpiece in my mind. They took a 5-8 to eight hour piece of the original 40 plus hour main story and made it into its own 40 plus hour adventure. Now, I know what you may be thinking, bloat, all kinds of bloat, bloat everywhere, but exploring Midgar was amazing and the world felt alive and had so much more detail than I was even expecting. But before we get too carried away gushing over the marvels of the initial release, let's remember that there's still a lot more to come, starting namely on June 10th when the DLC slash not DLC Final Fantasy VII Intergrade drops with a special Yuffie chapter. I strongly feel that the development of the Yuffie chapter for Integrade was pretty much a tech demo of the PS5 to see what changes would need to be made for the game to continue on. Much like how I believe the Miles Morales portion of Spider-Man was a tech demo with the same world to have Insomniac systems prepped for going in hard on the inevitable Spider-Man 2. With Integrade dropping just days before E3, I can see an announcement for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 being a surprise drop at the show itself. And honestly, even though I am hyped for it to happen and I'm expecting it, I will lose my mind if they really do announce the next part. I am that excited. The final piece of my list is a game that may be a pretty big long shot given the news overall, but I think Octopath Traveler 2 still has a good shot to be announced this year. When the original dropped using its HD 2D aesthetic, I was a little skeptical at first until I actually played the game. The retro Nintendo style sprites and beautiful HD scenery was something I never knew I always wanted. The game had me intrigued with eight different characters you could use, although whoever you picked first had to be in your party for the duration of their story. Each story had their own sense of intrigue, some way more than others, 
but all in all the game felt pretty solid and tossed in some new elements to the standard turn-based battles. In 2020, a free-to-play mobile game said to be a prequel called Champions of the Continent was released. However, back when that prequel was announced in March 2019, there was also a mention of the studio Acquire working on a new Octopath Traveler console game. It's been two years since that interview, and I think two years is a great amount of time to have enough for a reveal trailer to be dropped on us at E3. And what better time to bring out a new reveal trailer on something they are taking their time to work on than the first E3 back from being cancelled due to outrageously crazy world conditions. There it is guys, my take on some of the goodies that I think Square Enix has in store for us this year at E3. Let me know in the comments what titles you are most looking forward to from Square this year. And drop a like if you are excited for these titles as well. I can't wait to see what this year's E3 has in store for us, and my excitement is building for companies like Square to drop some big-time gaming bombs on us. Next week, I will talk more about what I expect from E3, but as usual, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you guys in the next video.